See such a great turnout today. All of you friends. Hey, Jerry. There's Jerry Mills. Good to see you. Jerry is one of our uh, award recipients a couple of years ago, and it's good to see you uh, up here. Jerry uh, was president of Fort Society when I was first vice president. So back in the mid 90s, we worked together for a number of years, and I, I think we got a lot accomplished back then, Jerry. We uh, introduced the first uh, CIDR certification program, the first HACCP based one in the nation at that time. And we uh, certified 128 cider producers in our first year of doing that. So that was a lot of work and very beneficial. Particularly the Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton has been receptive to um, advocating for specialty crops. And well, Curtis Orchard now has grown to the point where we have about 300,000 guests in a season. We're open July 20th to December 23rd. Uh, as most of you probably know, most of those guests are compressed between the middle of September and the end of October. So on a peak weekend in October, a Saturday or a Sunday, we'll have seven to 8,000 guests here. So uh, it takes a lot of staff to host those people successfully, you know? And, and part, of, part of that success is you want to have the people to have a good experience, not just to get what they came for as far as products, but to really have an excellent experience. So we couldn't do it without our staff, and I want to introduce you to our staff now because they are our face to the public, they are our family, and I mean the relationships that you have with your staff are just invaluable. I think all of you know that. That includes Kathy Beard, who's our assistant manager, she'll be in the serving line today, and then Janine Wheeler is her head chef, and John Wheeler is our head grill cook. Uh, we're not grilling today, but they are both here helping. They've been with us for many, many years, and we really value that. When we have staff that stays for many years, we really value that, and we try to make sure that we create an environment here where they want to stay for many, many years. Uh, Jeremy Coventry, where's he at? Jeremy's my son-in-law. He is our electrician, carpenter, engineer. So if you look at some of our structures out here, they look a little bit like Camp Lejeune or something. <laughs> That's why. And, uh, Jeremy served in Marine Corps, uh, active duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, interestingly, uh, when he met my daughter, uh, he was headed officer of the Marine Corps, she was headed in the Peace Corps. So if they say opposites attract, there you go. So she headed to Paraguay for a couple of years in the Peace Corps and taught people how to do beekeeping and, and things like that, uh, how to incorporate food products into their diet. She showed them how to make peanut butter. This is my daughter, Rachel Coventry, my oldest child. Uh, some of them didn't see you. Wait again, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel is the administrative manager, hiring manager, business secretary, and beekeeper. Can you tell we wear a lot of hats here? You know, there's like no one position job here. There's no specialist who says, oh, I'm only this, right? At Goodrum, sorry, I thought you butchered that name, didn't I? Raina started with us when she was 16, and she's still here. <laughs> and uh, your degree was in horticulture, right? Okay, she got a degree in horticulture. And Raina is Assistant Operations Manager, Outdoor Activities Manager, and that includes all of the kids' activities, the apple and hat. She's very busy, particularly in the fall. Lacey Gill, she also started with us at 16. She is Office Manager, and she's in charge of scheduling, HR, and she's our phone receptionist. Gina Recker, she is the Expense Manager, Creative project initiator, opinionated bossy boss lady, <laughs> and now a crazy pet lady who used to hate cats. But Gina is going to be returning to Colorado, her home state, for some odd reason. I don't know why you'd want to live in Illinois. You know, you never can fall to your death anywhere in Illinois. But uh, she's going back to live with your family, and we are going to try a little bit of a remote work 
experience because Gina has just done an excellent job in handling all the expenses and that. And uh, we hate to lose her, and she's part of our family. So, yeah. <laughs> now, I went to Denver one time, and I thought, why aren't there any pumpkin patches and apple orchards out here? Well, by the time we had the third hailstorm in two days, I kind of knew why. <laughs> not a very good area for that. Uh, Heather Zeiss, where's Heather? Okay, yeah. Heather has, she's filled a lot of roles over the years here, including the outdoor manager, but now she is one of our main buyers and also the head store stocker. So you know how it is on the at the end of a, a busy Friday where maybe the schools were out and you gotta get that store stocked Saturday morning, and then after Saturday you gotta get it restocked for Sunday, and you have to keep it stocked during those days. Heather is excellent at doing that, and she is one of the main people for that. And then uh, Cher Gibson, she is our co-store uh, manager now. She, Sharon, did I say that right? Is that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sharon. <laughs> Sharon has actually, now this is gonna make her feel old, but she's not that old, okay? <laughs> Sharon's been with us for 27 years, okay? And so she's been here since she was two, but, <laughs> <laughs> but now Sharon started, how old were you, Sharon, when you started? I mean, young, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and she's been with us all that time, and her entire family actually has worked for us for over 30 years. I mean, and her sons have worked for us, and her mom, and yeah. So, I mean, we've had some families like Sharon's that, I mean, when you find good people like that, you know, you gotta find a way to keep them, so. To the Work Society so we can continue to raise funds for the event. So we are so extremely grateful to your family for being so generous. Favorite events of the year. Um, and it's always so helpful to get to see a farm on site, be able to walk through the fields with other growers and specialists and talk and learn um, in person. There's nothing more valuable than this experience with each other. Um, with that being said, it is really hard to be the farm that opens your doors to such critical eyes. We are going to be looking in all of the closets and all of the sheds and <laughs> under all of the tables. And, uh, you know, I just appreciate so much um, the Curtis Orchard family for opening their doors to us. Um, all of the stress that you guys have been through getting ready. And thank you to the Curtis family. Can I get an applause for them for all of their for your participation in our day. Thank you. This is uh, meaning that $3,000 per month. This is for this month. The next <laughs> month will come another one. Uh, yeah, she's from the Department of Agriculture. If you don't meet, talk to head of the department, Dr. Adam Davis, and she's another person who talks to me what is going on in the Department of Agriculture. Dr. Andrew Taylor. Dr. Andrew Taylor is teaching the Orthodox She is from Kazakhstan. She is from Kazakhstan, not only from Kazakhstan, exactly from where Apple was originated. <laughs> Declan and Eric back here. The crowd's look so great because Declan and Eric and Raina and out at field tour. I talked a little bit, bit about this already, but for the rest of you, um, last year we found a lot of plum curculio damage in peaches in um, parts of the state, and it was in areas where the growers were doing everything right as far as spraying and controlling for this pest, and they still had crazy amounts of damage and yield loss. And so we sort of kind of quickly decided to start using some monitoring traps that um, there's not a lot of research on, so we really hope they would work. They do. Um, and uh, seeing if we could figure out if there's actually two generations of this pest. Extremely dry the last month. Uh, we have strawberries right now. Um, strawberry crop's good. Uh, um, yeah, our apple crop looks pretty good this year. Uh, we had a really heavy fruit set. Uh, went around and hit it with uh, two or three rounds of thinner, depending on the variety. And so this stuff that you're raising is not cheap. You got 20, 25% more in, 
you know, call stand it. So. Have the official bell ringing, they call it. I don't know what's all going to be, but you're all welcome to come to Out of Pass, Illinois, to celebrate our 150th year. I'm, and as you're wondering, yeah, I'm the fourth generation. He's a fifth, and we're raising the sixth on the farm. So how far it goes, I don't know. They asked me the other day about, we are talking out here about, this is my 60th year of belonging to the Illinois Horticultural Society. I'm 81, and I joined when I was 21. So it's been a great organization for all of us. I'm Keith and Denise's nephew. Um, and we're taking over Boja's Orchard this year, so um, it's been a big undertaking for us. I have a record and I started in 2016. I actually started in the cafe as a seasonal employee. And then when Paul's son decided to um, uh, retire, I took his job as the accounts risk payable. And then last year I had, well, it evolved. I became accounts receivable and I did employee admin once upon a time. And I think the only department I haven't worked in is the bakery. Because um, I just go help in the cafe. <laughs> Over here, if you can't picture this in your house and you don't walk up and be like, oh, that is so pretty. I um, got shoved outside to do activities manager because that manager had left. Um, I did that for a few years and then I was like, I'm old and I'm really tired of being outside in this heat. So I came inside and started doing some stuff in 